welcome to day 17 of the 31 day mobility challenge. Our session today is focusing on our hips and we're going to start by releasing our hip flexors. So to find our landmark you want to put your hands on the front of your hips and bend forward and see where you bend from at the hips and that's where you want to put your ball. So I'm going to use a tennis ball. I'm going to pop it to the front of my hip. I'm going to place my ball on the foam block, my arms come into our plank position and my other leg comes out to the side. Just for extra support so you can take um, weight onto that um, other leg to adjust the pressure that comes down onto the ball. I'm thinking about keeping my abs contracted, so not letting the lower back drop down. Pressing into the floor with the elbows, lengthening through the neck and breathing. So this can be quite an intense uh, release, so please modify as much as you need to by putting more pressure on your limbs rather than the ball to keep it that 5 out of 10. So just allowing the weight of your body to press down into the ball and you can just come into your body now and focus on your breathing and with the exhalation trying to sink down into the ball a little bit more and just make sure that you're not kind of uh, holding tension somewhere else in the body like your neck or shoulders so just try and really release through there so the last couple more breaths on this side so really a passive position we're not really doing much here but modifying the tension through our other limbs so we'll change sides. So if you need to find that landmark again with that little hip hinge, then do that. Moving your block over and bringing yourself down on the block. Leg comes out to the side for support. Arms in that supported plank position. Tummy is on, which means I'm bracing for impact. My neck is long and I'm just taking the time to breathe and find that 5 out of 10 intensity and adjusting my body weight accordingly. When I feel I'm in a good position, I'll start thinking more about my breath, thinking about trying to release tension on the exhale. And you're going to spend about a minute on each side when you do these stretches or these releases, should I say. So again, don't let it get beyond that 5 out of 10 because then you'll start gripping with other parts of your body to really modify that tension. So from there, we're going to come up to the neighbor of the hip flexor, the TFL. So this time your landmark would be to the side of where you just were into where your hip pocket would be. So I'm going to put the ball there and I'm going to relax my head down. You could have your leg behind. I prefer mine in front because it allows me to get more into that front side of the hip. But if that feels too intense, you could take more weight on that back leg. So I'm trying to relax my head as much as I can. If you have a pillow or a block, then it's kind of useful to just be able to put that head down and not have to think about your head being suspended in space. And then you're breathing. So again, this can be quite an intense um, position. So you don't need to move around. You could just hang out here. So if this really feels uncomfortable for you, then you could go back to the foam roller and use the foam roller instead, which would be at less intense. So last few breaths here, trying to sink your weight into the ball, breathing to release. And again, you would spend around a minute just trying to relax into this position. And we'll go ahead and change sides. So find your landmark, where would your hip pocket be? Just to the, So your hip flex will be here, just to the side of that, at the front side of the hip. Coming 
down, rest your head. And just breathe. So it doesn't matter if it takes you a few adjustments, you know, really take your time to find that right position for you. So where you feel that five out of 10 tenderness. And again, as we go through, so go through the, the um, days, if you find, oh, well, I don't actually feel that anymore, then maybe you could, if you're on a foam roller, move to a tennis ball. If you're on a tennis ball, you could move to a lacrosse ball. So always trying to think about modifying the intensity to get what you need from the position. So nice deep breaths here, trying to release on that exhalation. You can see where the ball is just underneath my hip to the front there. And again, today we're just holding in a very passive position. Okay, the last one we're gonna do with the ball today is for the glutes. So I'm gonna sit on the ball under one butt cheek. I'm gonna bend my legs and I'm gonna support my weight on my arms. So I'm gonna be slightly turned to the one side that the ball is on. And I'm gonna start by circling around on the ball and seeing where my little trigger spots might be. So circling around and if you find a spot you want to release more, you could add those leg extensions. Making sure you're breathing. Try not to collapse in your shoulders, so pressing, really pressing into the floor with the hands, working on that arm strength. You could also from there do butterfly on that one side. You could find maybe a different spot. And then go again with butterfly. Breathing. Or you could intensify the stretch by going into that figure four position. And rolling around, up and down, side to side, whatever you feel your body needs today. So let's change sides. So again, noticing differences on sides. Does one side have more tender spots than the other side? If it does, then I would suggest you spending a little bit more time on that side. So maybe you only want to do 30 seconds on the non-tender side and maybe a minute and a half on the tender side. So adjust to what your body is telling you it needs for the day. And then when you find a spot that feels tender for you, you could add the leg extension. So all these leg movements are gonna increase intensity. So if it's already at that five out of 10, then I wouldn't add any additional movements. I would just have the body weight pressing down into the ball. And then again, if the tennis ball was too intense, you would go back to the foam roller. And if the tennis ball is not intense enough, you would move up to the lacrosse ball. And again, you can go into figure four. So when you increase the stretch on the muscle, it's going to increase the tension that you're going to feel in your muscle. Okay, so a few options for you to play around with there. So always feel free to stop the video, spend a little bit more time where you need and then press play again when you're ready. So from our um, releases, we're gonna go into our first stretch. We're gonna stretch through the inner thighs in our frog position. So we're gonna take our knees nice and wide, and then you're gonna look down at your ankles and check that your ankles are in line with your knees, so your shins are nice and uh, vertical and in line, so knees and ankles are in line with each other. 
and you're turning your toes out. So you're flexing the feet and you're pushing your heels down into the floor. So once you've actually visually looked on both sides, because it, sometimes it feels like you're doing that and then you look and you're like, oh, actually I wasn't in that position. So double check visually. And then you want to start with your hips and knees in line. And then from there, you're going to add a little rock forward and a little rock back. So you'll rock in front of, in line with your uh, knees and then back behind your knees. So really important to brace the abs so the lower back doesn't arch. Again, pressing those hands into the floor. So active shoulder blades and the head is looking down. So you'll notice a theme with your positioning that it's pretty much always about that alignment and your breathing. At any time, if you feel that you want to sneak out a little bit wider, then go ahead and do that. And then we're going to come down to our elbows. Same thing, pressing the elbows into the floor, tummy nice and tight, and then forward and back, rocking. Good. So making sure you're not holding your breath and being honest with yourself, are you a five out of 10? If you're not, then maybe you could go a little bit wider with the knees or back up and bring the legs closer together. Really push your heels down into the floor. So we're gonna hold it at the back of the movement. So as far back as you can, without rounding your back and sticking your bum out. And then we're gonna press back and push the heels into the floor for an active stretch. So press now, heels down for 10 as hard as you can, push back as hard as you can, eight, seven, six, keep pushing, five, four, three, two, one, and then let's go back into rocking. Maybe you can take your elbows further back. Maybe you just gained some range of motion by doing the contract relax. So a couple more rocks and then we'll do that one more time. So holding at the back of your range, tummy braced, pushing your heels down into the floor and pressing back towards your heels with your body as much as you can. So 10, push nine, heels down, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and release. So you'll come back onto your hands, you'll bring one leg into the center and then the other leg. So from our frog stretch, we're going to go into our glute stretch. So from there, you're just going to lay on your, down on your back and we'll put, uh, let me put this leg up here so you can see. So you're going to put your leg, your foot across onto your opposite thigh and you're just going to hug your knee in towards you. So it's a knee hug with a diagonal leg, so one foot across onto your opposite thigh, and you're hugging that knee in. And you're just going to breathe. So again, a nice passive stretch, nothing too strenuous. Pushing your bum down to the floor, lengthening through your spine. So remember, if you need something so your head isn't tipping back, so you can have a nice long neck, then put something underneath your head so you're not getting neck tension. So from there, I'm going to take a hold of my um, shin and I'm going to bring my leg across to the side and I'm going to open my arm out and I'm going to twist, still in that glute, uh, glute stretch position and I'm still holding my ankle. If that feels too intense, then just release the hold on your ankle. And you're going to breathe here. So kind of holding that leg, that ankle, the shin, helps to kind of stop that leg being suspended in space if it's not coming all the way down to touch the floor. So you'll see if you can twist a little bit more, pull it down. Or you could put your foam roller or a pillow underneath your knee to support it in place. Then I'm gonna add my hand onto the top of my thigh and twist a little bit more, pressing down through my knee and my foot is supported still on my thigh. So from there, I'm gonna twist and breathe out and try and twist and press my shoulder blade down to the floor. 
So I'm twisting in the opposite direction to where I'm pulling through my glute. And I'm breathing. So again, try and breathe into where you feel the tension and as you breathe out, try and let that tension go. Okay, so we'll slowly unwind. That foot comes down and we'll repeat that on the other side. So foot across onto your thigh and we'll start with that little knee hug. So that closer that the foot that's on the floor is in towards you, the more intense the stretch is gonna be on this knee hugging side, so into your glutes. You're gonna breathe, lengthening through the back and the spine. Nice deep breaths. And then from there, you'll grab your shin or your ankle, the other arm will come out to the side and you'll let that leg come across. And then from there, you'll look away from your knee and look to the hand that's stretched out to the side. So breathing, trying to twist away and press through your um, shoulder blade. If you want to increase it a little bit more, go ahead and press that knee down to the floor and look towards the hand. So see if you can twist a little bit more on the exhalation. Feeling the stretch in through the glutes and maybe in through your waist and even into your chest on this side that you're stretching out to. And then from there, you'll come back to center, the foot will come down and we'll come into our next stretch. So from there, we're going to um, work on some internal rotation of, at the hip using a foam block. So you'll put the foam block in between your knees and your legs are lifted up in the air. The arms are down by the side for support or you can be driving your elbows into the floor. And what you're gonna think about is letting the heel on one side come out to the side. So you're pressing the knees together, squeezing the block and letting the heel come out to the side on one leg. So you'll do about 10 reps, keep squeezing the knees together, keep pressing the elbows down and finding that tension in your abs. Good. So if this feels um, difficult to do with your feet suspended, in space, you could put your feet up against the wall and do it with your feet supported. So let's change the side. So heel out, driving that knee into the block. Good, it looks nice. Keep pressing the elbows down into the floor. Keep squeezing that block. So about 10 reps here on this side. And then we're going to see how it would feel to squeeze both knees in and press the heels out. Good, so 10 of these. So really feeling the rotation coming from your hips. Breathing. Nice, four more. And notice when they're coming out to the side, does one rotate easier than the other? So if we need internal rotation for our squat depth. So if you really lack rotation on one side or both sides, it's going to really affect how deep you can come in your squat. So often people find that if that is a limitation, doing an exercise like this just before they squat really helps them to gain more depth in their squat. From there, we're going to do a leg whip. So we're going to come into a glute bridge. So I'm going to drive my elbows down into the mat and I'm going to lift my hips up in the air, tummy nice and tight. And so abs are on. So you want a straight line from your knees all the way down to your shoulders. Again, you want that neck nice and long. So if you need something behind your um, head, then use a little pillow to support you. Then from there, I'm going to lift one leg up in the air 
and we're going to take that leg as far out to the side as we can without letting those hips excessively drop down. A little shift is fine, but you don't want to be really turning the hips. And again, whipping the leg out to the side and back in. So I'm really having to use my elbows to keep my uh, the tension in my upper body, in my core, making sure I'm breathing as I come out. If you're trying to keep the leg as straight as you can, if there's a slight bend, then that's not a problem. Don't worry about it. This is eight. So we'll try two more. If, you, if five is enough for you, three is enough for you, then do whatever works for you. Then let's bring the foot down and we'll have a little rest. So let's try um, that on the other side. So work up to 10 reps if 10 reps feels a lot. So up into blue bridge, squeeze the bum, tuck under through the pelvis, then lifting the leg as straight as you feel you can, and then let it come down. So I'm really having to press the elbows into the floor to help stabilize me as the leg whips out to the side. So although it's called a leg whip, it's not super fast. You want to have that control. You want to notice any difference between sides. You want to make sure that you're breathing. So I'm on eight, I think, two more. Keep squeezing the bum and then bringing the leg back to center and coming back down. So from there, we're going to work on a Copenhagen progression. I know some of these exercises have funny names. Often were named after the person that invented them or where they were invented. So for the Copenhagen, we're going to use um, a little bit of a razor. So I put two blocks on top of each other. You could use um, blocks, you could use the side of a couch or a low stool or something like that. So I'm going to come into a side plank position with my arm. I'm going to take my other leg up against the blocks and my top leg onto the blocks. And then I'm going to check that my shoulder, my elbow is underneath my shoulder, so my shoulder is stacked. I'm going to bend my top leg, press it into the blocks, and lift my bottom leg up to my top leg. Now I really want to think about this hip staying up and lifted. I want to think about pulling my elbow into, like, I'm crushing a can between my elbow and my hip, so I'm engaged through these side abs and then we'll come back down. So Copenhagen, really good for inner thighs. Squeeze and lift, lift from your hip, breathe. If you need your hand on the floor for support, then do that, but trying to stay as stacked as you can in your body. Keep squeezing together. So five, four, three, two, and one. So if it's too much of a challenge to lift that bottom leg, just think about staying in this position. That would be option number one. Option number two would be just pushing down with that top leg into the blocks. Get that feeling as if you're gonna lift that bottom leg, but you don't. And then the third position modification would be to then go, go into that leg lift. So let's try that on the other side. So this is one that you kind of really wanna play around with if you haven't done with them before to find out what's the right modification for you. And then you want to try and build up your time in the position. So you might go, oh, I could hold it up for five seconds today. And then next time I'm going to try and beat five seconds. So again, nice side plank, stacking your body on top of each other. So hips are stacked on top of each other. Shoulders are stacked on top of each other. I'm lifting up through the hips, so I'm in that good side plank position. My hand could be on the floor for support or on my waist, whatever feels good. So you're either staying here or you're pressing the knee into the foam block or you're lifting that bottom leg to meet the top leg. And you're holding, squeezing the inner thighs together, making sure you're breathing and then you'll come down and release. And then again, you can do another set. See if you can beat your time from the first time. Lifting, holding, squeezing, 
crushing my can with my elbow to my hip, so I'm really um, tightening my um, obliques, the side muscles, and then we're going to come down. So take some time to play around with Copenhagen's. They're really challenging, but they are really effective for core strength, especially if you're needing to do side bending movements or stopping yourself from side bending and trying to stay um, nice and in a nice fixed position. Um, so we're gonna go into a supported side plank with abduction. So we, the Copenhagen worked on our inner thighs in adduction, abduction, and now we're gonna work abduction, which is our leg lifting up. So you'll come with your bottom leg for today, bent, and you want to have your elbows uh, stacked underneath your shoulder. I find a lot of people in side plank take their arm too far away from them. So again, squeezing elbow to hip and holding up. If you want to have your hand down and in front for support, you can, or the hand goes on to the hip. And then from there, we're going to lift the leg up and down. You want to make sure that when you lift the hip, the, uh, the leg, the hip doesn't drop down. So I'm constantly lifting up through this bottom hip. I want to think about, if you look at your foot, that your toes are pointing a little bit down. If your toes point up, then you've often lost the stacking in your hips and you're going to start using the quad and we want to be using this side of the hip into our, what we call our glute medius, which is a muscle that stabilizes the hip. So again, play around with your hand positions, breathing, and you want to work yourself up to 20 reps. So if you do 10 reps first, five reps, whatever it is, if you just are able to hold the position first of all, then that is a success too. So for some people, holding uh, into this position is a challenge. So just work on holding this position. Or um, another thing you could do would be shorten the levers by bringing the um, heels together and just lift the knees. So that would also be another modification. So use the modification that's good for you. And thinking about your side engagement through the obliques, thinking about that toe pointing down as you lift that leg up. And see, I'm not really going very high. I'm not going too much past my hip. I'm going from the floor to just above my hip. And again, you'll work your way up to get about 20 reps on each side. So today we're going to finish um, in supported butterfly, so reclined butterfly. So you'll have your soles of your feet together. You can use two blocks or pillows to support the knees. And you can put a pillow or something under your head to support your neck. And then we're going to roll the shoulders out the way underneath us, roll the shoulders back and down and open the palms to open up through the shoulders. So nice deep breaths from here. Thinking about just sinking into the mat and scanning your body to see if you feel any tension anywhere. So if you do, just check your inner thighs. Can you let them relax down into what's ever supporting them? So that's why it's really important that your knees aren't just hanging in space because then they're going to be gripping. I want your knees to be able to be relaxed onto something. Okay, so today we're just going to be thinking about that box breath and we're trying to lengthen that box breath. So yesterday we went up from four counts to six, so let's stay with six for today. And let's take our attention to our front body and evening out our chest and our belly breath. So if you need to just have a tactile check and put one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly to see whether they're even, then do that. Otherwise the arms are just still relaxed down by the side. So thinking about breathing in with that closed mouth and breathing out through your mouth or sighing on the exhalation. 
So now we've thought about our front body and evening out chest and belly. Let's think about breathing into our armpits. So feel where your arms touch your sides. See if you can breathe into the armpit area there. Expanding into your side body with your breath. So when you've done a few breaths thinking about your sides, let's layer the front and the sides together. Doing a few breaths there. And then taking your attention to your back body where your shoulder blades are touching the mat, where your back of your pelvis is touching the mat. Let's take our breath to our back body now. And then let's let all front, side and back. So six counts if you can for each side of your box. Or four counts, whatever feels comfortable. You shouldn't feel that you're short of breath. Shouldn't make you feel anxious because you're holding your breath too long. So just choose again the counts that are right for you. So I want to thank you for joining us today. Taking that time for yourself. Day 17, you're doing awesome. And we'll see you again, same place, same time tomorrow. Thank you.